This is the new Samsung Neo G9, and it's absolutely bananas. If you were to ask me, hey Kyle, who really needs a 49 inch 32 by nine super ultra wide QLED gaming monitor with a 240 hertz refresh rate, one millisecond response time, G-Sync compatibility, FreeSync, and HDR2000? I would probably say pretty much no one, but there are plenty of reasons for why you might want one including any of the eight or nine specs I just rattled off. In that sense, the G9 is like the Lamborghini of monitors. There are plenty of more reasonable options out there that'll get the job done, but few will be nearly as fun or sexy while doing it, which is why I've spent the last two weeks gaming on the G9 while trying to understand what all the hype is about. Right off the bat, I gotta address the form factor of this thing. If I'm being honest, the super wide 5120 by 1440 resolution overwhelmed me at first when doing basic productivity tasks. That's the wrong way! Although the only visual difference between using the G9 versus two curved displays side by side are the bezels in the middle, lacking that natural separation can make the G9 feel like sensory overload. Fortunately, I acclimated after a few hours of continuous use, largely thanks to the aggressive 1000R curve, which mitigates neck fatigue while keeping viewing angles in check. Still, this is something any interested buyer should be aware of. Using a screen twice as wide than you're used to might not be your thing, at least at first. Before you pull the trigger, you'll also want to make sure that your desk is big enough to fit this beast. It measures about 45 inches wide, and I typically recommend having 4 to 5 inches of desk space on either side of the monitor. So make sure that your desk is wider than around 53 inches, or else the G9 will look pretty cramped. The included stand features height, tilt, and swivel adjustment, and seems pretty sturdy. I wouldn't know, because I wall-mounted my G9 the second I got it, which is probably the only way to make this monitor look even crazier than it already does. Once you overcome any physical challenges with the G9, however, you can fully enjoy everything else it has to offer. Ironically, the display's size and aspect ratio is what simultaneously gave me pause and excitement about the product. Once I launched a game on it for the first time, though, any hesitation I felt slipped away instantly. Gaming on this thing is truly magical, which is exactly what you would expect when a company crams every little feature into their product, but to experience it firsthand kind of blew me away. Having the game encompass nearly your entire vision makes a huge difference to the overall experience, as you might expect. Rather than looking at your game through a window, you're simply there in it. In a way, it kind of feels like you're wearing a VR headset without actually doing so, and the display's insane curvature only helps to sell the effect. This is by far and away the most immersive gaming monitor I've tried yet. Beyond the form factor, the G9 has a laundry list of other features that make it such a great gaming companion. Perhaps at the top of that list is the quantum mini LED and quantum matrix technology that it's using. Think of mini LED as an enhanced version of LCD technology, because that's basically what it is. Light still passes through an array of liquid crystals, but there's significantly more local dim zones. 2048 on the Neo G9 to be exact, with 12-bit black levels that offer superior picture quality and greater contrast than on virtually any edge-lit LED display. This is especially noticeable when playing games with dark scenes in a dimly lit room. Mini LED still can't best OLED displays when it comes to black levels and contrast, but it's still a noticeable improvement over LED LCDs. Plus, widespread adoption of OLED gaming monitors is still a ways away. Another benefit of Mini LED, and an area where it has OLED beat, is in its ability to get really bright. Since the G9 outputs a peak brightness of 2000 nits and an advertised static contrast ratio of a million to one, it officially supports the HDR2000 standard for enhanced color accuracy and depth. HDR supported games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Red Dead Redemption 2 look fantastic, with finer details brought out from the dynamic range and rich colors that pop. Even games that don't support HDR will still benefit from Mini LED's sheer brightness. In the Resident Evil 2 remake, I found myself squinting at Claire's flashlight and muzzle flash, which added a little something extra to the immersion of it all. In fact, there weren't many games I didn't enjoy playing on the Neo G9. When switching to a fast-paced shooter like CSGO, I was able to enjoy ultra-smooth, ultra-sharp gameplay at 240Hz, a 1 millisecond response time for low input lag, and adaptive refresh rates for a tear-free experience. The only games you might not enjoy on this panel are ones that don't support its native resolution, leaving you with big black bars on either side, which some people go mad over, understandably. It's also worth noting that while I demoed the G9 using its display port, the model also supports HDMI 2.1 with ample bandwidth for 120Hz at 4K with HDR, allowing you to take full advantage of the I.O. on the latest GPUs from Nvidia and AMD. Other notable features include picture-by-picture, picture-in-picture, picture, automated source switching when powering on devices, and core sync, which actually changes the lighting of the monitor based on the colors in the game on screen. I've seen other brands sell standalone lights that do exactly this for hundreds of dollars, so it's kind of cool that it's already built in here. In short, I've had a really great time gaming on the Neo G9 over the last few weeks, and I've come to find that it provides one of the best gaming experiences of any monitor I've tested. The form factor and curvature is unlike anything I've really tried, and it delivers on exactly what it's intended for. 
total immersion. Pair that with a fast adaptive refresh rate, excellent picture quality, contrast, and brightness, and the G9 is easily one of the best looking and feature rich gaming displays currently available. Considering the lofty price tag that's sure to traumatize your wallet, it makes sense that Samsung is spared no expense or feature here. It's not perfect, of course. OLED still has it beat in several areas. It's absurdly large and cumbersome, and some games will look funny on it. But if those are compromises you can deal with, and you've got money to burn, the Neo G9 just might be your monitor end game. But that's gonna do it for now, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Toss a like on it before you go if you enjoyed it, and get subscribed for more tech content coming at you really soon. As always, have a good one, and I will see y'all in the next video.